Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Tuesday, December the 1st. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, the Lord comes to save us. O come, let us worship him. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life, and loves many days, that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil, and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves the crushed in spirit. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah chapters 7 and 8. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask a sign of the Lord your God, let it be as deep as Sheol, or as high as heaven. But Ahaz says, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you and upon your people and upon your father's house such days as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. In that day the Lord will whistle for the fly that is at the end of the streams of Egypt, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And they will all come and settle in the steep ravines and in the clefts of the rocks and on all the thorn bushes and on all the pastures. In that day the Lord will shave with a razor that is hired beyond the river, with the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet, and it will sweep away the beard also. In that day a man will keep alive a young cow and two sheep, and because of the abundance of milk that they give, he will eat curds, for everyone who is left in the land will eat curds and honey. In that day, every place where there used to be a thousand vines, worth a thousand shekels of silver, will become briars and thorns. With bow and arrows, a man will come there, for all the land will be briars and thorns. And as for all the hills that used to be hoed with a hoe, you will not come there for fear of briars and thorns, but they will become a place where cattle are let loose and where sheep tread. Then the Lord said to me, Take a large tablet and write on it in common characters, belonging to Maher Shalal Hashbaz, and I will get reliable witnesses, Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jeberechiah, to attest for me. And I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said to me, Call his name Maher Shalal Hashbaz, for before the boy knows how to cry my father or my mother, the wealth of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria will be carried away before the king of Assyria. The Lord spoke to me again. Because this people has refused the waters of Shaloa that flow gently and rejoice over Rezin and the son of Ramalia, therefore behold, the Lord is bringing up against them the waters of the river, mighty and many, the king of Assyria and all his glory. And it will rise over all its channels and go over all its banks, and it will sweep on into Judah, it will overflow and pass on, reaching even to the neck, and its outspread wings will fill the breadth of your land, O Emmanuel. Our writing this morning is from the large catechism uh, regarding baptism. Our baptism abides forever. Even though someone should fall from baptism and sin, still we always have access to it, so we may subdue the old man again. 
but we do not need to be sprinkled with water again. Even if we were put under the water a hundred times, it would still only be one baptism, even though the work and the sign continue and remain. Repentance, therefore, is nothing other than a return and approach to baptism. We repeat and do what we began before, but abandon. I say this lest we fall into the opinion in which we were stuck for a long time. We were imagining that our baptism is something past, which we can no longer use, for which we have fallen again into sin. The reason for this is that baptism is regarded as only based on the outward act once performed and completed. This arose from the fact that St. Jerome wrote that repentance is the second plank by which we must swim forth and cross over the water after the ship is broken on which we step and are carried across when we come into the Christian church. By this teaching, baptism's use has been abolished so that it can no longer profit us. Therefore, Jerome's statement is not correct, or at any rate is not rightly understood. For the ship of baptism never breaks because it is God's ordinance and not our work. 1 Peter 3, 20-22 But it does happen indeed that we slip and fall out of the ship. Yet if anyone falls out, let him see to it that he swims up and clings to the ship until he comes into it again and lives in it, as he has done before. In this way, one sees what a great, excellent thing baptism is. It delivers us from the devil's jaws and makes us God's own. It suppresses and takes away sin and then daily strengthens the new man. It is working and always continues working until we pass from this state of misery to eternal glory. We join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, merciful and holy bridegroom, we grieve the fall of your church. That's yesterday's prayer. Tuesday prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war, held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath, may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs to be ever watchful of the confession of your son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us, but if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace, that we may withstand all trials, and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen.
Have a blessed day.